We're across from the governor's office in Manhattan, and we're here to support Governor Cuomo. We're here to say we're on your side. We're here because we know that you're against an endpoint. This is not a political issue. This is a public health issue. Because if there is an accident, if there is any form of a terrorist attack, if there is an earthquake, and it should in any way cause a meltdown or a solar storm that is expected between 12 and 24 months, then it's immaterial whether you're rich or poor, Democrat or Republican. If the power goes out at end point, nuclear radiation is going to come into this area and New York City and 20 million people living in this area's lives would be put at risk. And no one doubts that. Simply look at Fukushima. No one believed that Fukushima could happen, and then it happened. No one believed that there could be a 5.8 earthquake in the Upper East part of the United States, and then it happened in the same week as not even a Category 1 hurricane, only a tropical storm. And look at the damage done in Vermont, New Jersey, Lower Manhattan, and on Long Island. We're here because we are joining together both anti-hydrofracking and anti-nuclear to have one voice. So I'm asking you, Governor Cuomo, I'm asking you and all your legislatures in Albany, and by extension in Connecticut and New Jersey, please consider the hate, health and safety of all the citizens of these great states first. If you do that, we're on your side. We're there to support you. Now we know by yourself you cannot change what's going on at an end point. But we also know that by being against Indian Point and listening to the science of why Indian Point is non-sustainable, then you can force the Nuclear Regulatory Agency, which we all know is utterly corrupt, it's in the pocket of the nuclear industry, we can tell them, shut down Indian Point while there's still time. From an energy perspective, we absolutely don't need Indian Point. Uh, the energy from there is expensive and dangerous. It's totally unnecessary. If we can look, what we really need to do is look towards real alternatives such as wind and solar power and energy conservation. If Germany can, the fourth largest economy in the world, can do without nuclear power, then so can the United States. Yeah. And what we don't want is Governor Cuomo to shut down Indian Point and replace it with hydrofracked energy because that is going to mean the poisoning of, of our hot entire watershed. There's only one direction that nuclear fuel and fossil fuel, the prices of that are going to go up and up and up uh, from now on into the future. Wind, solar, geothermal, tidal, etc. There's only one direction those prices are going to go, and that's down. And we don't end up with tens of thousands of years of radioactive waste that we don't know anything. There's no plan anywhere in the world for what we're going to do with that waste. And so, the time to shut down Indian Point is now, before it gets relicensed, and to come up with a coherent energy plan for New York City and New York State that does not involve hydrofracking or its replacement with coal plants or anything else. We've been complacent. We've been lulled into a sense of complacency that nuclear power is safe, that it's the solution to climate change. Fukushima woke us up. It's waking up a whole new generation of college students and young activists waking them up and saying, shut it down, replace it with clean, reliable, safe energy. It is too unsafe. We have 20 million people living and working within a 50 mile radius of Indian Point. That includes most of New York City, Westchester County, includes parts of New Jersey, parts of Connecticut, Lower Hudson Valley. We need to shut it down. We need to send a strong message to Governor Cuomo. In 1979, Robert Ryan, the director of off of state offices, state programs, the guy in charge of all the emergency planning for the 104 nuclear reactors in this country testified in public and said that Indian Point is one of the most inappropriate sites in existence for a nuclear plant. He also said in another hearing, I think it is insane, and this is a quote, I think it is insane to have a three unit reactor on the banks of the Hudson 25 miles from the Bronx and 35 miles from Midtown Manhattan. All these years later, it's no more appropriate than it was back when the guy in charge of emergency planning said it was the most inappropriate place in existence. 
That's why we're here. Because I go to every NRC annual review of Indian Point. And at one time, I got up and asked the regional director, his name was Hub Miller, can you guarantee that there will not be a radiation release at Indian Point? And his answer to me, in no uncertain terms, and again, this is a quote, because it rings in my ear since that day. He said, no one can ever guarantee that there will not be a radiation release event from any nuclear plant. Anytime a regulatory standard cannot be met by, an, by the operator of a nuclear plant, the NRC changes the standards. A perfect example is that they have just, within the past couple of years, taken fire insulation wrap that was supposed to last for an hour. It surrounds critical cables in the safety system. They found out that it couldn't last an hour. So they didn't force the operator to retrofit. What they did is they changed the standard so that this fire protection in critical safety cables only has to last 24 minutes. It's just nonsensical. The technocrats who support Indian Point and the nuclear industry look at probabilities. The probabilities are very low that a plant will have a major disaster. But when that disaster happens, and we've seen it many times, and you guys probably don't even know about some of the close calls, the same guy who oversaw the reduction of the fire standard in Indian Point made a bad judgment at the Davis Bessie plant outside of Toledo, Ohio. When the plant did shut down, they found that there had been corrosion eating through the dome of the reactor to within a quarter of an inch of breach of containment. The Nuclear Regulatory Commission's Inspector General's Office roundly scolded the, the supervisor who allowed it to go. Where did he go? He came to Indian Point. He didn't get fired. He wasn't thrown out of his job, even though the Inspector General's office said that the NRC was putting more weight on operator profits than public health and safety. We cannot rely on the regulators. They're nothing more than, than enablers of the industry. It has to come from us. There's more spent fuel at Indian Point than there is in all of the reactors at Fukushima. And it is so deadly. It has no place to go. Our local governments, our city governments need a plan. They need a plan for clean and green energy. And it's happening right here with building codes in New York City. It's happening where you get buildings that are, are, are producing a lot of their own electricity, up to a third of their own electricity, using natural light. All the things that people need. And all the things that the company that owns Indian Point Energy does not want you to hear about. New York City would be gridlocked within 15 minutes if there was a serious incident or accident at Indian Point. No one would go anywhere. So realistically, there is no evacuation from Indian Point, which is built on a, on a double fault zone. Earthquake fault lines coming up from Stanford, Connecticut to Peekskill right by Indian Point, and then the Ramapo Fall coming across the Hudson River, both pointing at Indian Point. And, and this is not my information. This information comes from Columbia University uh, Lamont Dougherty seismologist. And when the New York State Attorney General's Office raised that in the relicensing case, the Nuclear Regulatory Commission said this is not relevant. So, absolutely, it is essential that we close down Indian Point. Clearwater's goal, our mission, is to protect the ecology of the Hudson River and the well-being of all the people that live within its watershed. And Indian Point threatens both. It is actively leaking radioactive material into the river. All of these buildings, their, their roofs, their south sides, their east and west sides could be covered with solar panels. So when these reactors are closed in 2013 and 2015, we will be the Germany of New York State and lead the way nationally. And I created a website, which is the official website for the Closed Indian Point Movement. It's called shutdownindianpointnow.org. 
And if you go to the Learn page, you can learn everything about Indian Point. We need to debunk the myth that nuclear power is clean and green. It is none of those things. Surely we can discover a better way to boil water so that we can turn turbines. Indian Point, Indian Point makes us all neighbors. My county legislators, we have the smallest county in New York State, have voted to close Indian Point. We need New York City to uh, do the same thing. Your mayor thinks that we need the electricity and he's wrong and you need to educate him as such. Uh, New York City will have a cable running from New Jersey which will carry 570 megawatts, another line from Canada which is going to carry a thousand megawatts, the lights will stay on and the subways will continue to run without Indian Point. We need to shut it down. Thank you.